Greetings, fellow introverts. This is Wes Colton, founder and coach with Introvert Unbound. For this episode of the podcast, I'm going to talk about a odd concept that you've never heard of before because I made it up. And it may not make sense to you right away, but bear with me. I call it my aunt's bookcase, or aunt if you prefer, not the insect, the sister of your parent. So this is in reference to self-development, however you want to frame that, in terms of being an introvert. And what happens is, as we move along in time, there are different concepts, there are different skills that we're open to that we weren't open to before. And then in the future, there are going to be more that we're open to that we're not open to right now. And that's something I notice a lot of times with coaching that some clients or potential clients, they're not really ready for certain things. A lot of times introverts are have not accepted things about themselves, like that they are introverts and that's okay and they don't need to pretend to be extroverts. Other introverts are on the other end of that spectrum where they think that being true to themselves means never going out on the weekend, never learning to really talk to people and communicate well. I've got news for you. That's not called being an introvert. That's that's called, um, well, you could give it a lot of different names, but introversion does not mean antisocial. A lot of us can be antisocial, but that's a different thing. So what I have noticed is that if somebody is not ready for a piece of information, there is no point in pushing it on them. You can see this in lots of different aspects of the world and society. You can see it in politics, religion, what have you. People aren't ready for a thing. They're not ready for it. You can leave breadcrumb trails or do something called coyote teaching, which is kind of a Native American technique where you sort of leave a thing, leave a thing for people to pick up and then they can keep moving along if they want to. But They have to be ready. They have to be close to it. You can sort of throw something out there and see if it sticks, but a lot of times it won't. And as a coach, I've learned to not push it. I've learned to say no to certain clients or send them elsewhere because I don't think they're ready. So how does this tie into my aunt's bookcase? Well, when I was a kid, I grew up with my parents and my sister right next door to my grandparents, which was really a gift. It was a wonderful thing. We lived in sort of suburbs, but there was a big patch of woods adjacent, and my grandparents were literally next door, so I'd walk through a little sort of path in the trees to get to their house. It was a a wonderful thing. I'm really, really grateful for it, and I miss my grandparents who passed away years ago. And my aunt had lived there, obviously, as a kid, but she would come back sometimes. Sometimes she lived there for longer periods. Sometimes she would just visit, but her room was still sort of the way it used to. And she was kind of a hippie from the sixties. She was at Woodstock, all that sort of thing and into that kind of world of things. And so her bedroom smelled like incense and maybe some other stuff and had sort of the decor. And there was a bookcase there. And I noticed that maybe starting at, I don't know what age, 10 or 12, I would check out the bookcase once in a while and I'd look through all the books. Maybe there were, I don't know, 50 books, let's just say. And I would look through and I'd see one or two, maybe three that interested me. So I I can think of authors like Herman Hesse and uh, Don uh, Don Juan's books, um, Carlos Castaneda, things like that. There were kind of spiritually hippie sort of things, and then just some other just good books, classics, whatever. And so at that given time, I would go through and only find a few, like I said, that actually, that shined, right? That sparkled. That like, oh, this is this is something I'm into. And the rest were just boring. They're just like, ugh, or stupid or dumb, or I actually hated them or whatever. But then maybe every year, six months, two years, I don't know, I'd go back and the books that before were boring to me were all of a sudden interesting. And I was like, oh, wow, this book, I saw this before, but I didn't care about it. Now I do. And maybe even the books I put back and read prior were kind of dull to me. I don't know. And I would notice this would keep happening. So basically until the age of 18, well, I guess that's not entirely true because my 
grandmother who passed away when I was 16. All right, that's neither here nor there. But let's just say up until 16. Um, and then my grandfather ended up moving out of the place after a little bit. But up until that point, I was looking at new books every year that all of a sudden interested me and excited me. And that is a lifelong process. And if you're into some form of self-development, whatever that is, if you're listening to this podcast, you're into something. And I would urge you to, just because you passed over something at a certain time, don't ignore it forever. Give it another try. Go back and, and take a look at it and see. That could apply to just our content on introvertunbound.com, our podcast or whatever. Go back and, and see what you might get out of it, things that you may not have appreciated before and across across your life. People that you think could be friends or weren't before or dates or just topics, entertainment, music, all sorts of things like that. I didn't like Pink Floyd when I was nine, but I liked it when I was 13. So that's kind of the way we can look at self-development as routinely kind of going back to the foundations, going back to the beginning, going back to the start and the origins and seeing, okay, was there something I missed before because I'm now at a new stage? There's something called developmental psychology and we go through different stages, not just as a kid, but as an adult. So as you shift through these stages, all of a sudden you might be interested in that book about nature, whereas before you were interested in the book about marketing, right? And those are different stages there of, basically widening your compassion, your interest in the world. So give that a try in so many aspects of your life. Give it a try, certainly in terms of self-development. You'll find that in terms of being an introvert, there were things that you were not open to before. Things like, hey, you really should go out there and talk to strangers once in a while. It's the best way to build up your skills as opposed to just, well, I'm going to go on a date every six to nine months and hope it goes well. Well, it might go well, but at the same time, if you haven't been practicing your conversation, you haven't desensitized yourself to social stimuli, you haven't gotten more comfortable in these interactions, well, I got news for you, it might be difficult for you. So take a look at concepts that you've passed over before, try them again. You're almost constantly renewing as a person, just like our physical cells are constantly renewing throughout the vast majority of our body, your aptitude, your interests, your passions will change as well. And I hope that you take that in mind in terms of your self-development as an introvert. Take care. Hey folks, this is Wes Colton, coach and founder of Introvert Unbound. I hope you got something out of the latest podcast. And if you'd like to keep up on future episodes, be sure to subscribe on Podbean, iTunes, or wherever else you found us. If you want to go a bit deeper, please go to introvertunbound.com and sign up for our free monthly email newsletter. And if you're serious about developing a more fulfilling social, dating, and professional life, email me at Wes at introvertunbound.com for your free 20-minute zero-obligation online consult where we'll come up with a game plan for you to leverage your strengths overcome your obstacles, and become the introvert unbound.